Twitch. Hey, what's hey, up, guys? guys? Welcome to Fresh Red Podcast, man. Uh, we got Hotep Jesus in the house. In the building. Hey. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's get into it. It's going to be a base conversation. Very base. Let's Hey man, what's up guys? Welcome. We got Hotep Jesus in the house, man. This is a rare sighting. Yes. So uh quick announcements before we get into the show, guys. We're gonna have a great conversation here. Patreon.com slash freshfit, where you guys can get all of the behind the scenes content. Uh basically me, Frank Castling girls, annoying uh I guess behind the scenes stuff of me kicking out annoying girls, basically. Uh you can get the uh, zoom, zoom calls. calls. We just finished the zoom call right now. Yeah, bunch of guys are motivated. You know, I'm very honest behind the scenes with the zoom calls. You man, guys think he I... went in, man. He went, yo, we're gonna talk about hard, tough love. That was some tough love, man. You, well, you yeah. know, <laughs> God damn. What's up was on the call too. I'm just very, you know, I, I give a shit about my guys, man. So yeah. I don't want to see any any guys like you know, take out because like I said, we don't get the privilege of living in a uh how do I say this? We don't get the privilege of living in a Disney fairy tale like women. So go. uh what else? Um Oh yeah, guys. By the way, we don't got Chris on the ones and twos. We got so we, got, we Trey. got Trey. Camera so angles, Trey. Yeah, camera angles, Trey. <laughs> Trash. Anyway, <laughs> so um, yeah, Chris is moving right now, guys. But he's gonna be here for the late night show, so don't worry. So Trey is doing a bunch of things, looking at the super chats, yep. the Twitch, everything. So cut him some slack on this one. One man. Yeah, it's a one man show right now. And we have also uh, Spotify. Yep. Uh, Anchor. Yep. Um, Google Podcast yep. and Apple Podcast as well. On every single so platform. Everywhere. So listen to us on there. Also, guys, uh, go ahead and check us out on our new YouTube channel, Fresh Fit Clips, yep. where you guys can get all the, you know, the nice, quick, you know, concise clips from all the funny parts of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, seven to ten minutes if you don't have two hours to watch the full show. Um, what else can we shamelessly sell? Uh, uh, merch, man. Merch. Hey, we just got some new hoodies in the New in hoodies the in stock, guys. Uh, so, premium. Yep. Uh, yeah. Actually, these are like the retro. They don't make these anymore. Oh, wow. We don't make these anymore. It's only better quality. So these are like the lower tier ones that we have right now. But the, the ones that you guys order are actually going to be better quality than these. So. Fuck you guys. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I upped all the shirts, qualities, all the hoodies, everything like that. Also, um, check us out on uh, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash fresh and twitch.tv slash fresh if it podcast, guys. It's actually better quality on there than it Way is better on quality. YouTube. Uh, so yeah, man, check it out. It's it's a better streaming quality because as you guys know, Twitch is a streaming platform. But yeah, with that said, guys, um, hold let's... on. We got one more thing. We're what? dropping Dance on Demand July oh, yeah. 1st. So guys, get on the waiting list. It's the best Instagram course ever made, period. You learn how to be a brand aware, how to grow your following on Instagram, and also how to get dates from anywhere in the world. So check it out. It's going to be lit. Yeah, man. Yeah, check it out. Uh, yeah, waiting list is down there. July 1st, guys, and it's only going to be open for a few days. So go ahead and get on it there. But today we got Hotep Jesus in, in the, the house, building, guys. Man. Um, I saw some of the comments before. Guys, I just want to I just want to let you guys know. You don't have to agree with everything. You know, me and Hotep don't agree on everything. But we're yeah. good friends, and I think a big part of – uh, being able to be good friends, respecting each other's opinions and hearing it out. And honestly, this is going to be a really based conversation. Think outside the box. Um, we're here to talk about a couple of things. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be a good conversation, man. So Hotep, and then, and then Hotep, he's very wise, man. He's, he studies a lot. So you might think you know something, but he might have yeah, studied actually, it for, for a while. Very, so yeah, Hotep is a very high IQ. Real quick, I'll read these super chats and then we will uh, get into the conversation at hand. Yep. Uh, Sydney McTow, Hotep Jesus, my favorite philosopher. Mad shout out uh, to you, Myron and Fresh. All critical theory is from the Frankfurt Institute. It's a race, gender, class war. All Marxist teaching at university level. Why do you think all the radical SJWs and Antifa are college trained? Mm, there you go, man. Here we go. Sydney, man. Go. Down under. FB and Ninja Watcher. Thank you so much. The dame, the, the name's T-Nut. Don't, yeah, T-Nut. T-Nut, I think it was right. Don't John Thomasberg. Uh, denial is a river. Not a point of reference. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, that's funny. Thank you. And then, uh, Kindrak, 15 bucks. Of all men in this section of YouTube, Hotel of Jesus is one I resonate with the most. Um, he, oh, one second. He's the true definition of what it means to be to exude your power while in human experience. Bam. And then we got Ricky Webster. Yeah, welcome back. We haven't seen you in a minute. I love yeah, my friends with fam. What up? Much respect. Hashtag props do 100, 100. Thank Ricky. you so much, Ricky Webster. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, this is going to be lit. So, uh, so if you don't know who, who this Jesus man is, is. Hotel, tell him who you are, brother. 
I'm mean, a professional nobody, <laughs> <laughs> uh, tech entrepreneur, and uh, now a three-time author. I just released my my new book, The Patriot Report, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, a reference guide that's going to help us walk through the conversation we're having today on this whole thing called critical race theory. Mm -hmm. And um, when I uh, saw this conversation pop up, I had written something on critical race theory on hotepnation.com maybe a year or so ago or something like that and uh, gave my thoughts on it at that point. And then when I saw it pop up in the conversation over the past few weeks, I saw something quite different. Well, I wouldn't say different. I saw I saw uh, I saw it from another angle. Uh, and uh, what I saw was um, feminine energy. Mm -hmm. I saw that they're taking black issues and uh, trying to solve it with just feminine energy. Mm -hmm. um, critical race theory um, is an emotional conversation. Uh, which removes all the facts. Mm. It only includes the facts that uh, begin with uh, emotion. Oh my God, my family was slaves and you did this to me, you did that to me. And what I said today was, in order to have critical race theory conversation, the first thing you got to do is measure the GDP of the black community. What is the gross domestic product? A lot of people talk about the black community, they say the black community has a trillion dollar buying power. Well, what is their production power? What do they produce that they sell to the entire nation? What is it that they produce that they sell to the world, the gross national product? Until you have that conversation, you can never start to break down critical race theory. Critical race theory uh, is actually sidestepping the point. When can you we, define to the people what critical race theory is just so they have an idea? That's what I'm doing right oh, now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I got to break it all down. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's supposed to be dissecting racism and the race relations between, you know, mostly blacks and whites. And uh, the problem is they're not talking about economics. See, if they had uh, a number, a GDP, see, it, the, the pro here's the problem. Everybody wants to talk about racism, but racism is a branch of classism. You see, before you deal with racism, you got to first deal with class because Jay-Z ain't crying about oppression. Oprah, ain't she crying about oppression for other people, maybe, mm -hmm. but her herself, you can't oppress that type of person. They have too much power. They have too much money. So what we're talking about here is resources. So when we look at Thomas Sowell, basic economics, he says the definition of economics is the uh, study of the scarce goods and resources, the exchange of scarce goods and resources and services. But they never look at that because in critical race theory, they want to say whitey bad uh, black folks here, here's uh, health care for all. Here's universal basic income to create dependency so that you never actually build an economic base. It's a distraction from the money. Hmm. And that's the problem. Because uh, if you really wanted to look at race relations, you have to first say, well, why did white people feel a certain type way to black people? And, and really what it come down to? Sharing of resources. Who's cultivating those resources? And if you cult if somebody else cultivates those resources and somebody else gets a piece of it, taxpayer money, you might feel some type of way about that when somebody gets to share off of your work and and they come in and they get to leech off your stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you work for that. You want all of that. Uh, humans are infinite resource, but we're on a finite planet. So we're going to struggle to fight over things. And it's that exchange of resources that people aren't talking about. Because this topic is trending, man. Uh, it's been for a couple of weeks, right? So It's been trending for a couple of weeks now. Mm. And the thing is, you know, the white liberal wants to make it a, a white black thing. It, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. Because if black people had all the guns and black people ran all the courts and ran the government, does the N-word still have the same much power? <laughs> mm. right yeah. yeah so what we're talking about is is power the problem is with the socialists and the marxists and these indoctrinated uh students at these universities is uh they're taught that power is a, a white supremacy uh machination they're taught that power is bad they'll say things like you know power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely uh absolute power corrupts absolutely but the problem is when you talk about 
socialism. Socialism is actually the centralization of power. When you go look at the 10 planks of communism, two of the planks written by Karl Marx use the word centralization. Now, if power is bad, the last thing you'd want to do with power is centralize it. You should decentralize it, which is what Bitcoin is. De decentralization of the power. Decentralization of who gets to make the, the money decisions. And that's it. And, that, and that's where we are. Questions so far? Mm. Man. Okay, I can already see. This is deep. That people are going to get triggered. This is fantastic. I love this. Sheesh. This is why... Um, <laughs> You know, I love platforms like ours because we're able to give you guys another perspective. Not only do we talk about women and finances and fitness and everything else with a very, how do I say this, honest lens. Yeah. But we talk about situations like this. I can already see the SJWs are going to come after us on this one. So let's hit the super chats real quick. Uh, and uh, this is this is a fantastic conversation. Uh, Cadet 85, I don't like that term critical race theory. History either happened or didn't. Okay. Um, uh, and that Timmy like Maximus, feelings. Australian $10. Yeah, he doesn't like the word. Uh, okay, ten dollars. Thank you so much. All the way from Australia, uh, and then we got uh, the rye, the rye streams. Twenty four hours. Yo, fresh and fit. And to Hotep, you guys are having the real conversations. Can't wait to see you on Timcast. Mm. Yeah, we'll see if we can make it happen, man. Yeah, um, yeah, I put that. I put that word in. He did. With, yeah. Um, uh, lids, sour patch lids. Yeah. It's producers, so hopefully we can get these guys on there. That'll be an awesome conversation. Yeah, I hit her up first, on uh, that first super chat. What do you say? I wanted to tackle that one. The five dollar one. Yeah. Um, oh no, not him. Um, Shout out to, to Sydney the 20 McTow, one, though. The 20, 20 yeah, Hotep one. Uh, no, bursting with, yeah, uh, that one. with I don't like favorite. that term. Yeah, I don't like that term critical race theory. History either happened or it didn't. So here's the funny part. Okay. You see, the white liberal called us the N-word. And when they called us the N-word, they turned around later and turned it into a class. They turned it into a science, they turned it into an industry, they turned it into a market. They called us the N-word, then turned around and sold it back to us. Mm. Called it critical race theory. So they took their own history of racism, their own white liberal Democrat history of racism. And then they turned around and commodified it. They made it a product, something they can sell, something they can package, something they can ship, something they can sell you. And we bought it. Everybody went out and bought it especially during the 2016 uh, election cycle under Trump, right? Everybody bought into this whole thing about racism. But that's the slickness of the white liberal. Mm. To take your oppression and then sell it. They oppress you and then sell it. That's what the white liberal does. Then, and then, then what they do is they deflect and blame the others for their own wrongdoing. You remember when they took down a statue of Robert E. Lee? Mm -hmm. Robert E. Lee was a Democrat. So what are they trying to do? It looks like they're trying to erase their history. Covering their tracks because they don't want they don't want to be reminded of their racist history. And then now they come around and they uh, package it up and then they get black liberals to sit in uh, some of these great seats at some of the most prestigious media outlets. And then they push this whole idea of racism and critical race theory and we're oppressed and so on and so forth from their beautiful loft apartments complaining about the white man. But the white man cuts their checks and big checks too. Coach, I'm curious. So what is your view on rap? Because I feel like rap has been packaged in a way that we're so about, you know, to the black community. Mm. And I feel like we just take it as what it is. But it's a lot more than, than, than you know, just rap. It's more like a message to the, to the youth and to our people. Is that kind of like what you're talking about here or no? What With do you rap? mean? Like, you know, rap music, like, you yeah. know, Drugs, guns. Yeah. Is that kind of like how they're packaging it back to us or no? Uh, no, I mean, specifically in this case, they're packaging it as critical race theory to put into school systems. Mm. Like they're making this a part of the curriculum, critical race theory. So your child goes to school. They're not spending as much time on math, science and the arts. They have to sit down for 30, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever it may be, and learn about history, critical race theory, not history critical race theory damn you see i just wrote the book the patriot report we that's what we're talking about the link is in the description box that's history but it's history nobody's going to tell you about mm -hmm. i'm servicing the facts that everybody likes to skip over and if we can do that then we can be honest about history but they're not they're not they're not teaching history they're 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 cherry picking uh parts of history to feed an agenda that creates dependency 
mm. a victim. And that's Mindset. why I said a victim. That's why I said it's 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 important to speak about it on your platform specifically because you're dealing with young men. Mm -hmm. You see, the dating pool is getting ruined because of this whole idea of racism. Mm. How does a black community fight racism in very effeminate ways? Okay. Now we just said that racism is an industry. Mm -hmm. It's a market. So that means people can get money. Any any everyday fool can get money. Of can grift off of it. Of course. Right? A couple of Black Lives Matters uh higher ranking people were arrested by the feds, you know, for basically siphoning off money and using it for personal reasons. Damn. So you can go to blmchapterstatement.com and see for yourself what's going on over there. They're exposing, you know, the uh, mothership for not trickling some of that money down. Mm -hmm. But it becomes an opportunity for people to come in and feed off of this and make money off of this industry. And some people are doing this because, well, uh, they need it. They don't know any other way. But when you have people who are doing it, for malicious reasons, you start fanning the flames. But here's the feminine part. Here's where the feminine part comes in. In China, they have something called a social credit score. People think we don't have that here. We do have that here. You say certain things, you get canceled. You'll get strikes on your oh. YouTube account. We're all aware of this. Yep. Yeah. That's your social credit score at work. You breach one of those unwritten rules and you're demonetized. Yep. Now, it just so happens that everything that gets you demonetized is very masculine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> very true. Oh, we know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anything that represses female sexuality or female liberation to any degree or holds women accountable is considered hate speech or misogynistic. You know what I'm saying? If you tell women a fact that... If you are promiscuous, there's consequences to that, and men are not going to take you seriously for the uh, purposes of marriage or a long-term relationship. That's considered misogynistic. But if women run around and say men are trash or all men are dogs or whatever, it's okay. No one says anything about misandry. As a matter of fact, if you ask a common woman, "What does misandry mean?" they will tell you, "I do not know." But they will mm. know. But they might be able to tell you what misogyny means. Mm. As a matter of fact, they just throw the word around loosely. We had a woman on this show. That said, this podcast is very misogynistic. I said, okay, explain to me how the podcast is misogynistic. And none of them can formulate an answer. Mm. One of them couldn't define it. And another one said, well, um, you refer to feelings as if it's inferior. No, I never said that. It's just that to make rational decisions, you need to you know, minimize it to some degree, right? Yeah. And she was like, well, the world is run on emotion. Then she actually used the war to say war is done on emotion. I said, actually, not at all. War is almost always 100% logical. We didn't invade Iraq off of emotion. Mm. We invaded it for very, many strategic reasons, which, you know, I didn't want to get into during the show because there's a million reasons why, right? Yeah. But uh, but she tried to say, yeah, the world is run on emotions. No, it is not. <laughs> mm. It is run off of ration and logic because if you go off of emotions, what do you do? You accrue debt. You spend a lot of money stupidly, whatever. Oh, and just so happens that women are 80% of the consumer base and they hold three quarters of the debt mm. because they're emotional creatures, mm. you know? So... But if you say things like this, it's considered, you know, toxic, right. insecure, small dick and that's energy. What, and that's what critical race theory does. It creates another one of those boxes that people have to conform to. Exactly. Right? So yep. now watch this. This is how it strips the man of his manhood. Yep. Two ways. One, you know, I can move up in society by conforming to this feminist way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So it forces you because it incentivizes you. Then in another way. You're basically castrated mentally because of certain things you can't say. Yes. Once you censor speech, you censor thoughts. You start stop thinking certain things because you know you can't express them. If you know you can express things, you start thinking more things. Yep. So then you have individuals who are afraid of social ostracization. Yes. Mm. And that in itself is a form of castration. Damn. People are more concerned with saying things the right way than saying the right things. I'm going to say that again. Correct. In today's day and age, people are more concerned with saying things the right way versus saying the right things. Yeah. People are more concerned with how are they going to feel from me saying this yeah. 
versus is this the right thing to say? And and we have it on this podcast all the time. Yeah. When I tell women an uncomfortable truth about intersexual dynamics, and this is just a microcosm of the bigger problem, guys. What do they respond? I don't like the way you said it. I don't like it makes me feel bad. You know what I'm saying? Literally, like you guys see it all the day, all every day, every night. You know, <laughs> we bring these women on that they prioritize emotion. Shout out to Roll Tomasi. He's in the chat. Women prioritize how they feel about a fact versus the fact in itself. You know, so mm -hmm. that's that's an amazing point right and, there. And it's up. funny because even on TikTok, you know, you put out a video <laughs> and it says punished by behavior. They didn't like how you said it. Not yeah. what you were saying as well. Right. So it's like freedom of speech. I think not freedom of feelings because my feelings are hurt. Then it's it's going to it's going to be bad. So, yeah. Mm. And yeah. more importantly, the, the freedom of feelings is leveraged on the female side, not the male side. Yep. There, there's a reason why, you know, uh, our podcast is exploding is because. We're saying what millions of men can't say, and we bring on guys like Hotep exactly. that that are able to say this without having to worry about what's going to happen or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, you know, this is a podcast where men can come, be able to voice their opinions, or listen to opinions that are politically incorrect or considered toxic, misogynistic, or insert shaming language here, and they can finally listen to it and not have to worry about shit. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and we're going to continue to do this as long as. YouTube allows us, you know, Yo, what, I'm saying? Talk, what it is. Where else can you get this type of content for free? Mm, yeah. I mean, you can't go to news stations. You can't go to like certain networks. It's like, yo, luckily we're still here. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, Hotep can express his feelings and definitely not feelings, but facts. Yeah, facts. Yeah. And that in itself is priceless. So exactly. I mean, hell, we had to even make I feel like T-shirts like <laughs> because this is the world that we live in, man. Feels before real. Shout out to Rolo Tomasi. So man. Uh, go ahead, Hotep. Sorry, we didn't mean to. Now, nah, did you want to do super chats now? Or? Oh, yeah, I could do super chats actually. Okay. Yeah, we'll do them real quick and then we'll continue on. And we could talk about, I guess, castration uh, of, the, of the masculine energy. Man. Yes, damn. Um, okay, Darian Garillo. Uh, let me got let me got my grift on stop grifting and jit the like and the super chat. It's not Monday, but Hotep Jesus will always bring money content. Hotep to the people. Thank you so much. There you go. Ahmed Hill, uh, five dollars. This message needs to be heard. We must forge our minds. Absolutely. Yep. And guys, listen. Even if you don't agree with everything that Hotep says or what we say or whatever it is, because we're going to have disagreements, just yeah. listen to it with an open mind. You don't have to agree with 100% of everything. It makes, it makes you think. Yeah. That's the most part. That's the most important Wh thing. Why is he saying what he's saying? Why is this factual? Yeah. And you know what? Maybe it can challenge your beliefs a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the party's absolutely flipped. If you need proof, just look at the election map and say 1954 and prior compared to 2020. The answer will jump at you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Sikh Nova, what do you think about Gwen Berry? She made the U.S. Olympic team and she protested during the national anthem while on the podium. I think she's cloud chasing. Uh, yes, my Probably. friend, cloud is the new. Uh, <laughs> it's the new mm. money. Uh, Master Blaster Rhino. It's not Republicans and liberals are the new racists. Okay, uh, Ken or Ken or Dak. Uh, no white man has ever held me back. I've held myself back by making poor decisions, but that's not what they want the popular narrative to be. Holy crap! Talk about Damn. accountability. Facts. A uh, uh, lot of mercy. B. Uh, love the topic. Let's get active, fellas. Smash that like button. Exactly. Yep. And then uh, no hotep sucker the values. The two parties represent a change over time. The arsist Demo Democrats of the past are the Republicans of today. Nice try. Uh, OJ, you want to respond you, you to, that? Respond that? I don't respond to people who aren't on my level intellectually. Oh, shit. Okay. Nope. All right. Cal out. Don't to see Hotep back, just like RM Plug. Cool to see the OGs. Great stuff on Twitter. And uh, book Hotep not capping like Maddie, number one dating podcast in the world. Absolutely, man. Guys, we're, guys, guys, we're quickly moving into the number one male improvement podcast yeah. in the world. Guys, we're gonna we're gonna read ten and up because we got a lot. Oh, they're of flying in. Structure. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, guys, we got three thousand live viewers. So, uh, Cindy McTow, twenty dollars. As Ice Cube said, you the ones that we learned it from. I heard niggas back in nineteen seventy one. All right, uh, America was never a demo. This is from uh, R P Thanos. R P America was never a democracy. Follow the green, you follow the power. Capitalism rules. And oppression happens because it's lucrative. We must become better economically to make change. Cool. Okay. And then 20. Cadet yeah, we 85. read that one already. Oh, okay. We read that one. Uh, yeah, I know. Hotep actually addressed that one. You got one, one more new one by Strells. Okay. Um, it just came in. Uh, Trey, it should be on the screen. Uh, might be at the on. bottom here. So I want to, while we while we pull that one up, I want to address, uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, the victim. Oh, okay. Strails, I'm steeped, $50. And I'm steeped, steeped in academia, and as a male, they have stif stifled my voice completely using CRT as a facade. Oh, facade. It's Marxism in disguise and has been pushed since the 60s. Keep preaching, hold up. Damn, yeah. Let, let's, you know what? Let's talk about um, college. Um, for those of you that don't know, I went to, uh, you know, a fairly good school. I went to Northeast University in Boston, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, fairly <laughs> progressive school. Um, when I went there, I graduated in 2013. We were, I think, 55% female at that time. I'm sure we're probably closer to 60 plus. 
at this point. Women dominate academia at this at this point. Um, and college campuses, quite frankly, I mean, things have changed significantly since 2013 when I graduated. You know, it's uh, it's it's SJW breeding ground, if we're going to be honest about it. Uh, you know, it's very uh, politically correct. Um, if you're not, you know, if <laughs> the correct way of thinking is a female way of thinking, ten which tends to be on the more liberal side. And, um, you know, universities have become indoctrination camps, in my opinion. You know, you look at Jordan Peterson, he didn't want to refer to someone uh, – by a binary type pronoun and you know they ostracize them immediately and canada's even worse that's a whole other story Yo. but uh hotep what's your take on um i guess higher education nowadays and uh what it's done to the west in general mm. uh whoever pays for the books chooses the curriculum mm. so we got to first look at uh who is funding the educational system and then You'll be able to understand, you know, even in uh, socialism and communism, there was this thing about centralization education. You centralize education, you can make people think whatever you want them to believe. Right. So they did that uh, with the American system um, and uh, they federalized it. Now we got this thing called the Board of Education or something like that. Right. Um, federal education system, some random name. Uh, but uh, these are indoctrination centers. These aren't places of uh, intellectualism, many of them. I think there are moments of intellectualism at these institutions uh, in various subjects. But uh, the biggest problem is they don't nurture critical thought. It's you're writing your paper to uh, appease your teacher, to appease your professor. You're not writing because you uh, are, are able to express your thoughts freely and then your teacher then judge you off of how you supported your arguments, right? Because if you come to me and you say something I don't agree with, I would say, well, what are your arguments? And if you can give me some strong arguments, I'm going to give you an A, whether I agree with you or not. That's not happening in these universities where students are afraid to fail because uh, uh, the teacher is um, pushing out a certain type of uh, ideology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the problem out here, man. Um, a lot of this stuff is controlled. Uh, a lot of education is controlled, but at the very least, like I said, they're cucking people. So you're not allowed to even think or express a certain way or vote a certain way or wear a certain hat or, you know, it's 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 very oppressive as far as it really what it does is it, it cripples the people and not really the 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 the, the power structure. The, the power structure hates diversity of thought. So if you have if you can train a, a group of people to uh, reduce the various uh, you know aspects of thought and ideas uh then you can keep people into uh, a, a duopoly you can keep them in binary thought uh, every decision is bifurcated and, and that's where we are right now um you know they 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 they, they want to control thinking and then you know they want to uh have your peers be the ones that ostracize you for <clears throat> wrong think yeah i'm so glad that i didn't go to school over here man because like you just said earlier like, let's say my teacher because I'm very good at English, right? With essays and stuff like that, sharing my ideas, comprehension. And if I didn't have an exact, he could write a lot better than he speaks. Yeah. <laughs> if I didn't have like a the exact, you know, answer that, that they wanted, they'll say, "Hey, mm. you know, Walter, mm. let's talk about this." Mm. And then we would discuss it. And you know what? That makes sense. And it would actually change my grade. Mm. But in the states, it's like, yo, if you're not appeasing their their um ideals, it's like, yo, like this is wrong, mm. right off right off the rip. Mm. So you're right. It's all about the ideology that, that they have, not really what you might think about so mm -hmm. it's yeah very important. i mean one example which i'm going to put this to the camera is this uh alleged uh we have this uh -oh. grape culture right this uh -oh. word right here you guys know what i'm talking about we have this uh grape culture in the universities and and shout out to stephen crowder uh he went on a campus and he said uh grape culture doesn't exist change my mind and if you guys watch it i thought it was a very eye-opening um uh it's a very eye-opening show uh, so it was a very eye-opening youtube video because this woman immediately appeals to emotion right she comes in how dare you say that it doesn't exist i was great myself blah 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 mm. and he gave a very factual argument right mm. and he said that grape culture assumes that we don't have laws in place to pursue prosecute and put people in jail that do this mm -hmm. we actually do and as a matter of fact i'll take it a, a, a step further I think we have grape hysteria because we live in a world now where if a man is ex uh, is even accused, he's destroyed. Yeah. So we've overcorrected to the point where an accusation alone 
will destroy a man, let alone prosecution. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so this woman takes her individual story that says I was graped or whatever, you know, she claims she went to a party or whatever it is, which listen, man, there's real victims out there. I, it happens. It does happen. Yeah. But what I am saying is that women got to take some accountability, man. Like a lot of the times when these accusations happen, both parties are, have been drinking, they've been partying, whatever. I went to college. I know how it is. Any of you guys that went to university, you went to a frat party, a sport party, whatever it is, you know what happens, man. You know, the girls come to these parties, they want to have fun, they want to whatever. If both parties are too intoxicated to consent, you know what I'm saying? Are we not equal? Are we not the same under the uh, under the law? Right? There's a le there's a reason why she wears she has the scales and she's blindfolded. We're so when it comes to equality, it needs to be extended to the most important things, especially law and civil rights, right? But the thing is, is that they want to be able to get the benefit of the doubt. That I was graped with no evidence. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we don't live in a grape culture. We live in a grape accusation hysteria culture. Because a man, someone like, let's talk about uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh mm -hmm. Okay? About to be a Supreme Court justice passed the multiple FBI background checks, which for you guys that don't know, government background checks are extremely stringent. Uh, multiple, right? To get a clearance. And then this woman comes out of nowhere and make an, makes an accusation. With zero facts, by the way, no witnesses, just memory and feelings. He graped me in the 80s or whatever. Yeah. And this man gets put through the ringer. I get it. I understand he's he's held to a higher standard, uh, higher standard because, you know, he's going to be a Supreme Court justice, obviously. But he's put under oath and forced <laughs> to to recall events from 40 years ago, plus with zero evidence against him. What people don't realize is that she had a GoFundMe. She had a book that was being released. But let's forget about that mm. because believe all fucking women. Mm. Okay? Yeah. And this is what I talk about. We talk about this on dating, but let's have this tough conversation. Women want equality when it suits them, but they want female privilege when it suits them as well. Let's be honest about it. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because last time I checked, if we're both equal, we're the same. If I'm intoxicated and you're intoxicated, we're both, you know, graping each other technically. Mm. Right? Or... Uh, how do I say this? Actually assaulting each other, mm, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, they don't want to hear that. Right. The the man is always the aggressor. The man is always guilty until proven innocent. A man's reputation could be destroyed merely by an accusation. And let's talk about how a lot of them aren't held accountable or prosecuted for lying on a man. Mm, mm, you know what I mean? Mm. False accusations are real, guys. They are real. And as a matter of fact, you've seen it personified at the highest level with the Supreme Court justice bringing him where he has to testify under oath, which, got, by the way, guys, if he lies, can be hit with perjury. There's serious consequences to lying under oath for accusations that aren't even based in any type of factual uh, realm. Yeah, there was a recent case as well. Um, I think Ivan Preach did a video about this where this guy was in, in college and he was at this, this um, night, nightclub, right? You know, in the college town, whatever, they're partying. And this girl's all over him, jumping on him, kissing him, whatever. And he's like, hey, you know, he's recalling the event. They're playing the video to him live. He's like, yeah, you know, she was all over me. We were a little bit drunk, but we understood what we were doing. Yep. And then she went outside with her friend and said, hey, let's follow me outside. So he went outside with, with her and her friend. And basically she said to her friend, oh, I'm going to go fuck him. He's hot. I mm. like him. Mm. See, you, see you later. Peace. Mm. Mm -hmm. So mind you, this whole time is being recorded by the, the club cameras and outside cameras as well. Yep. So she's actually like attacking him, you know, sexually, all that stuff. Long story short. Um, he actually went to her house and actually there's footage in, in the, her uh, condo building as well. If her like all over him kissing, whatever. And he's just yep. like, he's just literally just there, like just taking it. It's like, yep. okay, cool. And then they go upstairs to her room, whatever. And they bang. Yep. Next day, grip case. And he's like, yo, like I never did that. It was consensual. Mm. Mm. Luckily for him, the cameras were rolling at the club, outside the club and at her, her building, a uh, condo. So th that, footage, that footage saved him. However, the problem is that because of that incident, the school no longer wanted to keep him on campus. He mm. lost his, his, his schooling. Mm. So women can literally destroy your whole uh, career, life goals, just from just seeing grape. Mm. And Guilty of, until proven innocent. And look, he's innocent, but the school said, no, we don't want that on our campus. Mm. How is that? And, that? and that happens mm. because here's the thing with the school. The school doesn't have to necessarily adhere to the law. Yeah. They, exactly. can, they can adhere to feelings. Exactly. Hey, this is bad for our campus. We don't want someone that was accused of this, even though they were found to be innocent. 
on our campus. You know, this happened with uh, with uh, obviously the Duke lacrosse case. Yeah. Um, I think this happened with with Yale, the girl that walked around with the bed on her on her on her shoulders or whatever it was, mm -hmm. the, and she made an accusation as well. Like, there's serious consequences to men being accused, and the problem is that women aren't held accountable if they make a false accusation. And here's the other thing too. Let's 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 just deal with the elephant in the room. A lot of women, they consent at the time. They wake up the next morning regret. and they regret it. Yep. Mm. They have buyer's remorse. And what they don't understand is that, oh, I, I consented then, but I, I want to retract consent now. And it's like, whoa, because we're getting into a dangerous zone here mm -hmm. where now they're they're retracting consent after the fact, mm. yeah. which which what? You know what I'm saying? So we're, we're literally going off of feelings when laws are supposed to be enforced on facts. At the time, the fact is you consented. You know what I'm saying? Period. You know what I'm saying? And 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 now you want to come back and withdraw it? Feels before reels, man. And mm -hmm. this is sen setting a dangerous precedent because men are always looked at as their aggressors mm -hmm. when it comes to these types of cases. Mm -hmm. They're always, Regardless if the woman was jumping on him, doing those other stuff, all she has to do is make an accusation. Yeah. You know, we and the whole thing, like the whole ideology, the ideology of believe all women is asinine. It mm. is crazy to me that that's even being put as a, as a hashtag. Mm. As if women are incapable of lying and or making up things. Because here's the thing. Let's deal with another dark reality. Guys, women have buyer's remorse all the time. Yep. They drink some alcohol. They have sex with a the guy. They smoke some weed. They smoke some weed, whatever it is. They have sex with a guy that thought he was that they thought was something, but he really wasn't. Mm. And I tell women on this podcast all the time, men lie to get sex. They definitely do, which is why we tell you guys on this podcast, don't cap. Do not cap. <laughs> be congruent. Because, be congruent. Yep. Because what can happen to you guys. Obviously, we talk about it from being congruent from a sexual attraction perspective, but also from a legal perspective. Mm -hmm. You need to be who you say you are and be honest. If you're high value, be high value. Credit score on point, yeah. money on point, uh, fashion on point, whatever it is, be who you are. Don't don't lie to get you it. Niggas, you niggas out here lying like, bro, I just got to keep it a stack. Oh, I'm a lawyer. Oh, I'm a millionaire. I do this. I'm a doctor. Do you guys not understand that if she finds out that you actually do something else, like you work at Subway or some a shit, janitor? she could come back and say you graped her, bro? Yeah, this they're they're working about putting this on 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 the book somewhere, and man. You, and you will Some never, states are trying to put this on the books. And you will never be a lawyer at that point. Yeah. <laughs> so yo, uh, th this is what we live in, guys. We live in a fields before real society. Shout out to yeah. Rolo Tomasi in the chat. We've talked about this. Yeah, I agree with Rolo on this. Enthusiastic consent is coming. <laughs> mm. It's coming, guys. Like mm. we're gonna get to a point where you're gonna be like, you know, doing. How do I say bedroom fun with a girl? We're trying to keep this somewhat YouTube friendly. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> because I, I I this nest needs to get spread out for guys. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be doing bedroom fun, and she's gonna be needing to consistently tell you during the bedroom fun. Oh yeah, we keep going, we keep going. That's where we're gonna be going. Mm. It's gonna get to a point. I, I in the next ten plus years, where dudes are gonna be like having like making chicks sign a non disclosures and or recording them when they bang. Bro. Actually, that's what a lot it's of rappers and now celebrities do. This already they, happening before now. they walk in the room and your phone sign this NDA. Now you can come in the room, your phone's outside, but you're not going to bring that stuff in here. It's already happening, bro, because you got to. because look at what the celebrities are doing. They're already protecting themselves against this me also era. You got to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It is crazy to me yeah. that we live in a world now where people are really running around saying, believe all women as if. Mm -hmm. the, 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 it's hilarious how the, the contradiction. Feminists want equality, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then they're running around saying, believe all women as if women... Mm -hmm. <laughs> are superior to men, which inherently means they're we're not equal. Oh man. Like we they're incapable of lying. It, yeah. it, 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 this is crazy, bro. Yeah, real quick. Uh, <laughs> you brought up a very good point earlier, Hotep, about social currency mm. and social credit, mm -hmm. right? So our sponsor today is Identity IQ, and they talk about credit monitoring, how to build your credit score. And me and Myron, of course, high value guys, we build our score up to get cars property and also investments so guys real quick we're going to show our sponsor here at the need iq and here's the link here we have in, our, in the description box so if you're wondering how we build our credit scores mine's perfect 850 his hum, what's the score right now uh let me look actually i'll check it for you guys right yeah. now and we showed you guys many times on the show our credit score guys this is our partner right here uh, at need the iq finally we're going to reveal our secrets here on how to mo monitor your, your credit scores also how to get you know a higher score as well and also how to real time I'll watch your scores just in case something happens, like you know, identity theft, all that stuff. So it's very important. Yeah, uh, guys. I mean, we talk about becoming high value to protect yourself from BS like this. You yep. know what I'm saying? And obviously, finance is an important part of this. Um, I just closed on a house uh, on Friday, but we f finalized it today. And a big part of that was my credit score, guys. So yep. I'm at a 787 now. It's about an 800, but I've been doing 
a lot of inquiries, obviously, because I've been buying property up and everything like that. Yep. So, guys, protect yourself, right? Number one, protect your finances, protect your credit, and then, therefore, you protect yourself from BS like this. You know yep. what I'm saying? Where false accusations, whatever it may be, because we live in a dark world now where women will come at you if you have money and you and they want to come up, bro. It is what it is. Like, a lot of women make accusations. Look at... um. Who's the NBA player? Bulls. Uh, um, James Harden? No, man. Uh, damn. Uh, wait. So, uh, who's who? The the, uh, the Bulls player. The, uh, he had a threesome with a chick and his friends. Derek or a train? No. Um, train. Someone, train, someone's train, 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 Do you know something? Rose. Derek. Rose? Derek Rose. Was it yeah, Derek? Derek Rose? Rose would be the only player. Yeah, Derek Rose. There we go. Uh, uh, false accusation. Mm. Woman was never held accountable. You know what I'm saying mm. for that. So now, the the bigger Derek case Rose, for that is is Deshaun Watson. What's still going on with him? Oh yeah. Tell us about that one, Trey. Well, yeah. there hasn't been much much updates though. But all those accusations came up, and there's no clear evidence of mm. great happening or the assault in any of those things. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. You nah. can, you can tell I, I don't want sports. Yeah. <laughs> very very honestly. But yeah, guys. Yeah. Protect yourself. Get your credit monitored. Obviously, get your money up and and then last thing, uh, so you don't deal with this last BS, thing, bro. If you want to be congruent, have a good credit score. So when you use your credit card to pay for a trip with a girl or go out to dinner, you're not spending your money. So that way you're congruent. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. All right, uh, cool. Man. So, uh, so um, what's what's your take on it, uh, uh, Hotep? Obviously, we on what credit? Uh, the, the, no, no, no. The whole um, grape Great. hysteria and everything else like that running around I, on college I, campuses. I think y'all said it all. Okay. I think y'all said it all, man. Uh, I wanted to touch on the credit, though. The credit is uh, a very important thing. I mm -hmm. fixed up my credit. I'm definitely above 700 now. Nice. Bam, bam. Yeah. Um, beautiful thing to have and have the option of. And I think people should uh, definitely take a look at that. Yeah. yeah. Guys, it's you can important. sign up for only a dollar. I use it myself, actually. Yeah. It gives you monitoring on all three of the biggest credit bureaus. Equifax, TransUnion, Experian. Exactly. And yep. on top of that, if you get your stuff, um, if you get your identity hacked, which has happened to me before on the dark web, they give you up to a million dollars on uh, protecting your identity, which and is losses, crazy, which is wild, bro. So yeah, you get on, get in for only a dollar. It's very cheap if you if you're serious about your money, bro. You got it's like a life lock on steroids, guys. Because at this point, with the way cryptocurrency go is going, with the way the internet is going, with everything being digital, you need to protect your digital footprint. And credit is a very important facet to that, especially if you want to get into real estate investing or whatever it is. You know, I wouldn't have been able to get these properties that I'm getting. I'm about to close on my third property for this year. It's all off of my credit. Guys. And actually, we bought our Range Rover off of credit. Yeah, literally. Mm. Facts. So that's crazy, guys. Mm. How much credit is, is important? Yeah. Um. But yeah, guys, go ahead. Sign up for only a dollar. It's uh, it's worth it, guys. You know what I'm saying? So that you can be congruent to what it is, and you don't hit with these get hit with these stupid accusations. Uh. But Hotep, I will say this too because we brought girls on the podcast, and they say, I say, well, name one privilege that men have that women don't. Ooh. And one of the biggest ones they tell me, which is hilarious, is, well, you don't have to walk around and be scared. And I'm like. Well, actually, uh, men are far more likely to be victims of violent crime and or any type of serious uh, crime that, uh, that relates to violence. Gang and, stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, and everything. it's like you might feel that way, like I'm scared or whatever. But the reality is men are far more likely to get assaulted or whatever it is. And that same murder, girl was still partying, kidnapped. partying the same night out in the streets. So I'm like, all right. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Stupid. So, um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, that's another point. So, uh, OK, so we talked about education. Mm -hmm. Um. I guess let's talk about the money side of it then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in my book, The Patriot Report, uh, we actually detail the money. Down below. Um, yeah. Link is in the description box. We detail the money. And when I say the money, I'm talking about we go back to who was financing the crowns in Europe. Mm. Now, who was financing the crowns in Europe is not as important as knowing that the crown was financed. When you think of king and queen, you think, oh, they come with the riches and so on and so forth. Well, that wasn't the case. There was somebody who financed a lot of these European invasions. A lot of these wars were financed. And some of these guys financed um, many invasions and many wars. Uh, Illuminati. Uh, <laughs> that comes later, actually. Okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> that comes. Yeah, the conspiracies in there. We we talk about in my book. There's you know Adam Weishaupt and you know what he I, said about exactly back in the 19th. Wait, no, way, way back 1776. Seven, there you go. Yeah, seventy seven. The leader of the Illuminati is real. Yeah, I was telling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Very real, man. I'm always ready. But um, the real thing was uh, fractional reserve banking, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people think that fractional reserve banking is a new phenomenon. 
or they believe that the Federal Reserve is um, is the beginning of that. Um, but they don't have the 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 predecessor uh, to fractional reserve banking. Uh, when even um, you have some of the colonial America, when you have pre-colonial America, you have pre-colonial Europe and you have fractional reserve banking where, uh, for example, uh, you can turn in um, your note for a set amount of gold or silver. Right. Or what they were doing was. They were issuing more notes than they had gold. Mm. You see seems, what I'm saying? Uh, Sounds familiar. Very familiar. Sounds very familiar, man. <laughs> mm, I wonder why. Uh, and that's the idea of fractional reserve banking. So I list that whole thing, and then I even um, break down how the United States came off of the gold standard to understand that whole thing. But the 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 underlying thing is what I really wanted people to see is how these decisions get made, because if you understand how these decisions were made under some of these past presidents, you understand how decisions will be made and who's really controlling things in your lifetime. And that's why I really wanted to empower people because I'm like, if you look at the past, you'll see the future. So that's why I wrote the book. So people can go and see, okay, you know, this is why we entered this war, civil war, World War One, World War Two, so on and so forth. There's reasons why. A lot of things were coerced. There's multiple banks involved in the United States and they just so happen to surface right before a war, <laughs> you know? So I just wanted to list all that information so people go out and get it. Um, because uh, once you understand the money, you stop worrying about things like race. Mm. You start thinking to yourself, well, um, it's a money game, not a real. Yeah. Cause I mean, a lot of people, they ask for like, they want liberty and they want freedom, but what is liberty and freedom without power? Liberty and freedom without power means somebody else can come in and they can take that from you. Mm -hmm. But when you have power, Liberty and freedom comes with that. Sovereignty comes with power. So you have to have the power first. You have to acquire the power first. Like I said before, they don't want black people to really talk that up. So they, they throw the boogeyman on to say the power is white supremacy ideas and so on and so forth. So we never look down that road. But that's really come, that, what it comes down to is. So now you have to check yourself and say, you know, how does the black community build some some sort of economic power? How are we? I mean, that's why the Democrats get to control our vote. Our vote is because every year we come back to the political structure and ask, what about me? What are we going to get? Mm. And it's like you can have that conversation, but it can't be so much focus and emphasis on it. Like it's like either we get something from this administration or else. And it's just like you should be able to do on your own and going to the government should be a caveat shouldn't make you. And I think that's that's the that's the big issue with CRT is it wants to paint black people as victims so that they never actually become empowered. Mm. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Yeah, I, feel Very. Like, I feel like they want us to depend on the government solely. Yeah. And then it is just my belief, man. I feel, I feel like there's going to be a one world um, government, mm -hmm. one world order. Yeah. And if you're not aligned with what they say or what they believe, you're going to be mm -hmm. ostracized or even killed. Well, I was I was talking to my homie the other day. And they uh, lived in Thailand and uh, in China. Mm -hmm. And they told me that um, the people over there are pretty much like, you know, uh, told what to do. You know, here's your job. And this is, you know, what you're going to do. And it, she said, even, you know, teaching some of the kids, even in, in China, uh, she'd ask him a question about, you know, what do you think about this story that we just read? And he's like, what do you mean? What do I think about it? It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any ability to like analyze and say you know how i felt about this material they just didn't care even in thailand she said that the way of life she said in some ways is cool because everybody just wants to relax and sit by the beach but at the same time there's no forward thinking at all um but that's what happens when you have some of that go government um assistance is it leads people to have no drive mm. you know what i mean and it and it, and it and it actually removes the humanity from the human and you're no longer human. You're no longer thinking and functioning at your full capacity. You're a sheep. Yeah, you're a sheep. And that's kind of like what they want because then you're cattle and, you know, they can do what they want, what you want to farm. Slaughter you, monetize you, however you see fit. Even school, we're creating workers, worker bees. Yeah. They just work for the plantation. Yeah. So school is nothing but re dress rehearsal for, for work. Mm. Right? It's got the same hours. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and, and then homework is just conditioning you to take work home when you do get a job. Damn. <laughs>
That's true, though. <laughs> right? I think about that. Because you work nine to five, and then you come home at five, and your boss said you still got work to do, but you're conditioned to do that already. So you're like, all right, I'll do it. When really, nah, like, my work hours are supposed to be between nine and five. I'm not supposed to bring work home. So, you know, it, it's, and then you'll, you'll, you'll notice that the entrepreneurs are usually the kids that don't do well in school. Like when I look at my graduating class, you know, all the entrepreneurs are like the kids that C, C plus. Yeah. C's, maybe some D's in there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a, a B. I was, I was a C student in high school. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. yeah I, was, I did well, better, better in college. I graduated college with a three, three, but I didn't like, once I got that freedom of more hours, yeah. like being able to work within my time frame, it was fine. But like, can, can, Strain to that, you know, what six to two p.m. Mm -hmm. you know thing in high school, mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah, like somebody asked me, they said, um, what would I rather hire? Would I rather hire a uh, a college student or an entrepreneur with ambition and drive? What do you think I said? Man, entrepreneur. I'll probably say a college student with ambition and drive is a better employee. <laughs> Correct. Damn it. <laughs> the and you would think. I should hire the entrepreneur. And I do hire entrepreneurs all the time. But they're going to they gonna leave. They're going to leave at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I get what you're saying. They're yeah. going to get their own ideas. They're going to, you know, like a lot of things. And that's cool, too. Like, I want people to do that. Yeah. But sometimes I just need you to sit, that, sit down and just execute this job. Right. And sometimes entrepreneurs are going to get bored at that job. Yeah. You know, because they're 100%. entrepreneurs. They're going to want more out of life. Yep. So sometimes it's better to give it to somebody who's been an A student and it's just like, okay. Here's the job. I have must complete job in a complete job and they wake up and they do it again tomorrow. Some people are automatons like that yep. where they can do that. But usually entrepreneurs, they need some variety to, to their life. Mm -hmm. And um, it, if, it, it creates happiness for them. And this is why. Um, and you guys can say whatever you want. We talked about this with Rolo actually last week. Um, this is why women are far better. They tend to get better grades and school is better suited for little girls to succeed than little boys. Yes. You know. Yeah. Um, you know, sitting down, being quiet, being well behaved, you know, being, yeah. uh, let, you know, um, following the herd, following the herd. Women are hive minded creatures, you know, since yeah. the beginning of time, you know, you know, women operate better in, in numbers versus uh, being individual. You know, hell, on this podcast, you guys see all the time when we ask one woman a question. I don't know if you guys noticed this. The other night we had a, a, a smasher pass, you know, ha ha ha. Let's, you know, go down a little bit. Uh, uh, we'll, uh, I guess. How do you how do you say the word? Sprinkle uh, it. No, no, no. We'll just sprinkle this in a bit. And we asked the girls, hey, would you smash or pass? One girl immediately said smash. Mm. And then we went around the table. All the girls said no. And then when we got back to her. She said, oh, well, I don't know if I would do it now. And what she didn't realize, you know, subconsciously was as soon as other women started to say no to having sex with this man, mm. you know, just off of just looks, she kind of withdrew her um, mm. immediate smash because mm -hmm. women are very uh heavily influenced by the herd yeah you know and that's and that's so that's that's you know by thousands of years of uh programming of you know when it's only been in modern times that women have been able to say co to exist without the provisioning and the security of men so you know they still have that hive mind where they need to you know work together even when they have disagreements they'll disagree very politically correct and give their opinion but they'll give it in a very light way you passive, know what i'm saying in a, in a very passive way versus men are more uh prone men agree too but men are more prone to speak their mind versus women which is what i've noticed on this podcast quite a bit you know we know this we talk about it in rp theory whatever it is but to see it personified in real time and on the show is very interesting mm. but um but yeah like going back to the education system like yeah it, it's definitely set up um for entrepreneurs to not thrive and workers to to do better in school you yeah. know yeah yeah i mean just the environment of school is just terrible it is. No it way. is. They don't teach you personal finance. They don't teach you, uh, you know, how to. They don't teach you like real life skills. Yeah, well, I mean, just the environment yeah. itself. Yeah. You know, the, the building. The, I, I think the majority of classes need to be taught outside. Mm. Mm. OK. Uh, I, I believe that there's something wrong with the design of the buildings of school buildings. OK. It's they're designed wrong. They're designed just like prisons. It's like jails. Yeah, yeah, they like these boxes and clusters and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm in cluster B. I'm in cluster C. At least when I went to school, yeah. I yeah. that. And in sunlight, right? Yeah, like sunlight helps you think, and it it, it kind of keeps you awake. Yep. And you lock people in these dark rooms and wonder why they falling asleep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like facts. well, you're boring. You're this dark room, you know. Da 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 da. Um, but yeah, you know, I think there needs to be a redesign in architecture. That's why I like Kanye West so much. He's talking about redesigning architecture. Is you can design the architecture in such a way uh, so that it brings more lighting into the school and makes it more 
you know, a appealing environment mm -hmm. and more conducive to learning. Um, and then having outdoor indoor areas, mm -hmm. right? But again, this is probably costly, you know, of course. in our timeline. But I think that's, you know, if I were to design a school, the first thing I would look at is the actual architecture. Question, hold that for you. Do you think there's any way of going back or reversing this change? Because I feel like there's no going no. back on this point. No, there's no turning back. Right. We've, we've, we've lost that opportunity a long, 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 long time ago. Right. A long, 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 <laughs> long time ago. That's another reason why I wrote my book was because I wanted people to know that what we're arguing about today has its roots in 16th century Europe. Yep. Mm. So, Adam Weintop. Yeah. I mean, before before him. Guys, Google that name, Adam Weintop. It shows a lot about why things are happening right now. And yeah. who planned it from the seed. Way yeah, back but, in the day. Let's, let's, but even let's break it down. That. Let's let's I mean, if you could give like the people kind of a summary, like the, the whole history and trajectory of how this happened. I know how do you capture a, long... a nation? In order to capture a nation, you have to capture its currency. Well, the currency of nations have been captured since the 16th century. Mm -hmm. So who's doing the capturing? Whoever is doing the capturing of the currency of the nation is the one who controls the nation. You mm -hmm. control the money, you control the floor, everything else. Right. So everything that you start seeing on TV is just it's part of the mirage. It's it, it's it's part of the fiction agenda. It's part of the matrix. It's not even most of it's not even real. All of it's distraction. You know, that's why I say with CRT, it's like it's becoming popular because they want you to look over here so you don't look somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So it becomes another uh, projection on the screen. Yeah. And that's what all these things are. They're just pro 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 uh, projections on the screen, but they're not real. This is going to be an unpopular opinion, but I will I will say it because um, a lot of people ask me about this. I know this conversation is probably going to get hit, hated on by black Twitter or whatever, maybe, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to say it. Um, racism is almost self-perpetuated. And what I mean by that is that. And I'll use the African-American community as an example, because as much as you guys want to say you are an African-American, I actually am. My parents are from Sudan, which is in Africa. And then I came here. Then they came here in the 80s. <laughs> and I was born in the United Yo. States, which I'm the definition of African-American. He's more African than me. Yeah, He's I don't know. I'm from the islands, man. Barbados. These dudes want to sit here and be like, I'm whatever. <laughs> it, it is what it is. And and uh, here's another thing, too. Like, it just because you're not a part of a race does not necessarily mean that you're not able to speak on that race. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. That's like me saying, like, uh, that's like. <laughs> that's like me as a man saying like oh i can't speak on on uh you know female situations i absolutely i can you know you you can speak on anything if you're educated to it to an extent where you you know where you know what you're talking about what i will say is this yes there were horrible things that happened in the past in the united states slavery etc it is what it is right but what i will say is that we're at a time and place now where you can rework the path you know we're in a position right now where we have situations that allow people to progress you know you got affirmative action whatever it may be mm -hmm. and you know we have corrected to a degree have we corrected 100 percent? i'm not going to say that mm -hmm. but uh, what i will say is that a lot of people like to say it's the man it's the white guy mm -hmm. they like to point fingers at yeah. everyone else except for themselves yeah. okay we have the benefit of being in a first world country where you have free thought free thought to a degree mm -hmm. right uh you live in a stable country where you don't have to worry about you know, not being able to eat, not being able to get drink uh, clean water, whatever it is. A lot of people like to, and we talked about this on a Zoom call, a lot of people like to look at what they don't have versus what they do have. And quite frankly, you go to a third world country, whatever, they'd be happy to be in our shoes. You know what I'm saying? They'd be happy to even get the opportunity to live in a first world country and make something of themselves. Because I think, you know, yes, is the education system broken? Yes. Is there is there abject poverty in, in certain areas of the United States? Yes. Or do we come from... Yeah, are African Americans, uh, you know, more prone to single mother households, which are more conducive to failure? Yes, but what I will say is that we still have many privileges and accesses that other people would dream to have. Yeah, and we got American privilege. Exactly, yeah. we got American privilege, first world problems, and people tend to forget that there's still a second and third world out there as well. So what I'm going to say is this: crying about injustices all the time perpetuates the problem. The yeah. N-word only has power because we allow it to have power. That's true. Mm. If you I'm, didn't give a fuck and you'd laugh at him, be like, whatever, bro. Mm. And just went about your day, wouldn't have power. I don't care. What, you what, give what, it power when you care. Yeah, well, that's I, what, I don't care. That's what critical race theory literally does. Critical you know? race theory, um, somebody asked me, he said, uh, well, critical race theory, do you think it'll help uh, racists deal with their racism? And I'm like, no, it's going to just fuel the fire. It's going to mm -hmm. make them angry. It's going to make them grow stronger. Mm -hmm. And I think the people that created this whole uh, popular subject know that 
then they're fueling races and they're trying to create races out of this because they're putting a study in the schools that people really don't want their children having to study. They would rather have their children study other things. And I totally agree. Like, why are we turning this? Um, the, 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 the main problem with the black community from a white people perspective is Democrat policies. Mm. It's the, they're the ones, if you go look at all the inner cities, they all run by mm -hmm, <laughs> Democrats, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And then they turn around and say, oh, it's not us that's the problem, it's racism. Who, Earl with the pickup truck and the Confederate flag that works at, um, you know, JD's Auto Parts? Yeah. He's not affecting... He ain't affecting anything. <laughs> he ain't affecting... You, you, you know what? I'm going to say an unpopular thing. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. You want to know who's really being uh, prejudiced against? White men. Yeah. Let's keep it a stack, man. Affirmative mm. action. Yeah, the all most, these things we have in place. Most hated. It's overcorrected to the point where we are literally ostracizing white men, man. We want to hire colored people. We want to hire women. women. We want to, if you're an, an, uh, a colored woman, you're going to be, you're, there's a higher probability that you're going to get hired for a job, you know what I'm saying, over a white male. We've done all this pretty much. <laughs> To you know, to mitigate wh white male influence, I get it. Oh, they had all the power, so now we got to uh, correct for it. All right, cool. We've overcorrected now. Nowadays, we live in a world where it we got Caucasian men running around saying, "I'm sorry for what happened to you 500 years ago," as if they had anything to do with that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We're trying to punish them and shame them or whatever, and it's completely okay mm -hmm. to treat Caucasian men like shit mm -hmm. in it today's is. day and age. It is, and I, I'm gonna speak for them. You know, fuck yeah. it, because they can't. They can't even say if they say it, they're gonna be like, "You're white privilege." Mm. All this extra bullshit. It's like, mm. well, let, let's 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 look at what the shutdowns did. We're talking about critical race theory. Mm. Let's talk about the shutdowns. So, uh -oh. who 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 was in charge of the shutdowns? And we want to talk this is white people, right? Mostly on the left leaning side of things, because Trump wasn't with it. He was like, "Yo, let's keep, he said keep business open. We want to yeah. keep this thing going." All the cities that are coming out. LA, New York City, even Miami. Miami is the most uh, uh, liberal city in, in Florida. We're yeah. the last ones to open, last county. Yeah. And who does that hurt? The black, black people. Business. <laughs> yep, it really does. <laughs> so are we going to talk about that in the CRT conversation? No. Of course not. Because they can't have you looking at the truth. Because one thing with the whole Black Lives Matter conversation that Trump did, it actually got people, black people activated and thinking and, and working together and doing black business. So it did activate them. They're like, all right, these people are activated, but it looks like they're going away from our thing. Let's keep them distracted with the racism. And the, so the new thing now is CRT and everybody's talking about CRT, critical race theory, and analyzing why they call us the N-word. But I told you before, that's got to do with resources. And what do you always say about women? They were the best resource extractors. Yep. Right. And guess what? All this socialism and Marxism does. It extracts resources. So you're dealing with a feminine energy. When you're dealing with these Marxists who uh, purport critical race theory and extracting resources from people and extracting their ability to even manipulate these resources and then just use them to, you know, for your own voting block and for your own political and cultural gains. All of this stuff trickles down into culture. So Hotep, what is the next step for us? Cause I feel like we spoke about what it really, what CRT means, you know, what's really happening behind the scenes. I want to say one more thing. Okay. Go just on. to add to what Hotep said, cause he made a great point. Cool. Um, the victim mindset is, is continuously perpetuated. And I will say this too. It's completely okay. We've had on this podcast women come in, you know, colored women. Oh, that white boy, he's a C and with ER, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The racial derogatory term for a Caucasian person, right? Mm -hmm. It's completely acceptable to call white people mm -hmm. Graham Sears, right? Mm -hmm. But let a white person say, well, you know, the reason, you know, well, you know, mo majority of prison inmates are represented by African-Americans. <laughs> oh, my God, you're racist. <laughs> and they could be bringing up like an, a statistical fact. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's amazing to me how people want to say, oh, the white man is racist. When in reality, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, not a lot, but many people that, you know, continue to perpetuate racism, you know, from the Black Lives Matter camp or whatever it may be. They're the biggest racist of them of them all. Yeah. They're the ones that are, that are literally calling Caucasian people slur terms and then expect them to not say anything back and not, not only not say anything back, but not say anything of statistical fact back because it's considered racist. That's a crazy world that we live right, in now. Yeah, We've right. overcorrected to the point where now <laughs> we are literally 
the same the same things that were put in place to make things fair have made things completely almost unfair. Mm. People that are less qualified for jobs are getting hired based on the color of their skin versus their merits. Mm -hmm. And we all lose mm -hmm. when we do that because now we're putting unqualified people mm -hmm. in positions that they shouldn't be. Get mad at me when I say this shit. We hire police officers, firefighters, etc. that aren't qualified for the jobs, can't pass fitness standards, can't pass background checks, whatever it is, for the purposes of appeasing the social narrative and making them feel good, but this person isn't equipped to pull out a, a fellow firefighter out of out of a uh, out of Bu a burning building, burning building or not equipped to handle a confrontational suspect, whatever. I watch uh, a lot of police dash cam footage, etc. I'll be honest with you guys. When the female officer's on scene or whatever, she's a liability a lot of the times, man. Mm. Call, call it what you want to say, man. Mm. You know, it mm. is what it is. A woman cannot physically <laughs> deal <laughs> with a male suspect. Mm. And as a matter of fact, she compromises her male officer that's with her. I've seen it where male officers are fighting with the suspect and the woman can't do anything. Mm -hmm. That's true, man. A lot of these 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 bad shootings conducted by female officers because they, they don't necessarily have the physical stature to deal with these men. This is biological, man. Fuck your feelings. Mm. So we need to get out of this feel situation and deal with facts versus feelings and racial uh, racial past and everything else like that. It is what it is, man. We're at a point now where it's like, are we really going to you know, complain and try to get reparations for something that happened centuries ago? Mm. You know, every, yeah. every people has been uh, persecuted at some point in history, man. You know, I'm not saying that I'm not trying to say that African Americans haven't been through it, man. We have, you know what I'm saying? We have, but it's like other people have suffered too. And we've gotten to a point now where it's completely socially acceptable to attack Caucasian people, namely white men, call them racial slurs with zero consequence. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they point out the statistical fact, it's immediately met with you're a bigot, you're a racist, whatever it is, because they have that cloak of, I'm black, so I can say whatever I want, and I can attack other races as well because I was persecuted centuries ago. Yo, quick tip on that, man. So, like, I'm new to the States, right? I've been here six years. And my mom always told me, Walter, when you go to the States, be careful. You might get shot by cops. And I'm like, why would I get shot by cops? I'm not going to say anything crazy. And what happens is I see all the time on these videos, people are like, yo, I'm not showing you my ID. Who the hell are you? Why, why, why are you pulling me over? Yeah. I got pulled over three times, right, bro? Mm. Two were white guys and one was a, a black cop, right? Mm. Two white guys. I was like, yo, two white guys. I was like, yo, um, hey, officer, how's it going? Uh, what did I do wrong? Okay, cool. No problem. Like, you know what? Have a good night, sir. Mm. You cool about it. Everybody's cool. Happy, right? Mm. But the 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 black cop was like, black chick was like, yo, like, I'm having a bad day. Fuck it. I'm going to give you a ticket. Mm. So, but see, it's how I approach it, approach the uh, you know the scenario. Yeah, I wasn't mean and telling him like, oh, this and that. I was like, you know yeah. what? Good day, officer. How's it going? Boom, boom, boom. But it's how I approached it. Yeah. So I just feel like it's always accountability on the person's part. Yeah. Not, not always the they're, other they're gender. They're complaining about what happened, but what they don't realize is a lot of the times when these shootings happen, these altercations happen, it came because the, the person was aggressive in the beginning. And yeah. the thing is, guys, you got to remember that police officers are trained in the United States to meet force with a force just above it. To subdue the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. As a matter of fact, they've taken they took some newscasters that tend to uh you know left lean a bit, if you know what I'm saying, and they put them in precarious situations that police officers would be in. You know what happened when those newscasters were put in those positions? Every single time they shot the gun. Mm -hmm. They gave them like little plastic guns and they told them, Okay, we're gonna put you in a situation that a police officer would be often be dealt with. They shot every single time. <laughs> Bad shoots every single time. <laughs> so people would never understand the issues and problems that. Uh, law enforcement officers come into play where their life is on the line and they don't fucking know you. Mm, yeah. They don't know what's in the car. They don't know what's going on. All they know is that this person is acting extremely aggressive off of something that's minuscule and we could have, they didn't have to go with that. A lot, we got to have some accountability here. Mm. It's not because of your the color of your skin. It's because of the way that you acted after the fact. If he comes in and he has preconceived notions about colored people, don't perpetuate the stereotype. Making it worse. You're making it worse. If he really is racist, why don't you just dispel the the, the racism, the, the the possible racism? Just hey, officer, how are you doing today? Hands on the steering wheel. Be polite, courteous, treat him like a human being. Oh, why the fuck you pulling me over? It's because I'm black. No, for just, what? Just how are you doing, officer? Today, license registration. I'm going to be reaching for for it here. Is that okay with you? Uh, da, da. When you take these like little steps to show that you care about their safety and they're a human being, you know what happens? Oh, you know. Thank you. Have a good day. I'll just give you a warning. Mm -hmm. But no one wants to talk about that.
Mm. They want to sit there and complain and yell at the cop. Oh, why are you stopping me? I'm colored, but they make it a race thing immediately, bro. Yeah. That's I, I blame a lot of that on, on the political environment. I blame a lot of that on media, social media, Black Lives Matter, because, you know, if you're a person who doesn't know nothing from anything, right, and is not as uh, conscious as others, and all day they're t- telling you the cops are your enemy. Yeah. The white man want to kill you. And when you get pulled over, you might just be scared for your life. You yeah. might actually feel like that. And that's why I said this is the problem with CRT and some of these things. And they actually push people to have been in bad interactions with cops. Yeah. yeah. When you go look at Khalid Muhammad, Khalid Muhammad back in the day told us his ranking um and dog tags. When you get pulled by a cop, you tell him you're ranking dog tags. That's it. There's no arguing. There's no going back and forth. We're behind enemy lines. That's what Dr. Khalid Muhammad taught. So when I look at these situations, I totally agree with what you guys are saying. There's a certain way you got to conduct yourselves. Um, and I think that it'll mitigate a lot of, not all problems, but I think it'll mitigate a lot of the problems. Um, just by being calm, you, you, you put the cop uh, at ease. What was the question you was asking for? Where do we go from here? Yeah, so what's the next step? Because I, I get what you're saying, 100%. Uh, CRT is going to be a problem because it has a feminine, feminine agenda. Mm-hmm. But where do we go from here in terms of like, I don't know, I guess like, dealing with this issue or mm. maybe solving it. And I don't think we can solve it, but I'm just saying like, where do we go from here? Uh, step one is uh, go to uh, my website and get my book, The Patriot Report. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So you can understand the reason behind everything. Nah, I just did that plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. It, it's, it just came out last week. Mm-hmm. Um, so where do we go from here? A, a lot of times people try to uh, resist um, change or resist a certain other person's ideology. Um, and, and I've been that person in the past. Um, you know, I think today it's about you know, spending more time focusing on your culture and your ideology and really galvanizing that and figuring out what does that look like? You know, what is my, what is the, the, the first five minutes of my day looks like? What's the first thing I think about? What's the first thing I eat? What's the first thing I do? What's the first thing my family does when they start the day? What's that ritual? What's your religion? And I don't mean religion like Christianity and Islam and those things. What's your religion? Like, like I asked the Internet the other day. I said on Twitter, I said, what's your religion? Wrong answers only. And people started telling me things like, you know, gaming and drinking and weed or, you know, what, or girls or whatever it may be. But that tells you what their true religion is. Right. So you, you really got to, instead of worrying about taking down somebody else's ideology, work on perfecting yours. Mm. Because if your thing is popping and people don't like what's going on over here, they're going to come mess with you. Yep. The other problem is a lot of people spend so much time fighting this system. And it's like, after you, let's say you win and you beat the system, what alternative do you have ready for people? Is that built already? Because otherwise you'll just leave a, a lost, wandered people and nobody wins. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really interested in it as like, you know, dismantling some of these things. But I think one of the most important things we could do is exactly what y'all are doing. Tell people how you feel. Talk about this shit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Talk about the topics. Be open minded and and hearing other people and their point of views. And, and doing a lot of peer reviewing of each other's ideas and thoughts and having those conversations. I think what it does, it also gives other people the bravery to speak up because what I was telling you before, mm-hmm. a lot of people are afraid to speak up because they might lose their job. They might, you know, the social credit score is going down in all these different situations. But the more, more of us speak up, the more other people have the courage to speak up as well because there's a silent majority out there who I believe is going to set the, the the planet right Boom. at some point. So that... Goes back to the point here. We teach on the podcast. Level up for yourself. Yeah. Figure out your own issues. Work on that. And by default, you coming from that healthy state, you can then go ahead and make a change or give a solution at some point. Because if you're not wholesome yourself, then how can you fix a problem that's not even you? So, yeah, you know. Uh, real quick at the super chats, and I, and I love the 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 chat. The chat is divided. Crazy, some of them, man. Some of them are like, "Oh, Myron, you're all for fresh. You guys are coons." Blah, blah, blah. Guys, what I'm saying is this. There's good police officers. There's bad police officers. Hmm. But you want to know something? When they pull you over and you act crazy, you and, and you act crazy, what you're basically doing is you're forfeiting control of the situation to them. You're giving them leverage to fuck you up. Yep. You're giving them leverage to escalate force. And what you need to do is always stay at the lowest level possible so they have very little leverage to fuck with you. Yep. Do you understand, guys? I'm actually giving you guys the power by telling you not to react. Yep. For all you guys out there that want to be, oh, pro-black, blah, 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 
Martin Luther King got a lot of things done by being peaceful. Why? Because he understood that by being peaceful, you're going you're gonna to be able to get things done. It is what it is, man. You know, by acting professional, not acting crazy, not perpetuating the goddamn stereotypes that there that a lot of people are, how do I say this, indoctrinated to believe from popular media about African-Americans, what you're doing is you're setting a standard and protecting yourself because when you act crazy, the police are going to escalate, guys, and you're giving them the ability to escalate. 100%. I, I, think, I think there's a big problem with, uh, when it comes to police, it's really the problem is to, with the people who write the protocol. For example, um, the the brother that they shot uh, who was drunk in the uh, fast food restaurant, uh, um, he fell asleep in a fast food uh, drive through lane. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was last year. And the cops shot him. He took one of the cops' uh, tasers, ran, and then they shot him and he killed him, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I hate to do the whole racism thing because we don't know how they felt about black people when they pulled that trigger. Um and also what you was talking about before, you was talking about like on the Zoom, you was talking about like betas, shoot, like betas pull the trigger. Like they're some of the most emotional, scary people. So sometimes you think these cops are shooting because they hate you. It's like now they're shooting because they're actually scared for their yeah, own life. For these, their aren't, life man, yeah. these aren't manly men. These aren't men who have been trained in MMA and been war uh, tested or anything like that. But the protocol is the problem. For example, if I know... I may potentially detain somebody. Mm -hmm. The first thing I would have them do is have a seat on the curb. Mm -hmm. Don't have a conversation with somebody you may potentially detain while they're standing up because then it's going to make it harder for you to detain this person. Mm -hmm. If they're on the ground, it's just like, nah, you can sit back down. Every time he tries to get up, you can just give him a little nudge and I'll sit back down, right? It's mm -hmm. harder to do that and get away. Um, so little things like that to tweak the protocol on how you deal with people, even how you talk to people um, is a problem. I know if I was a police officer and it was that guy, um, I don't know if I if I go through with what they had. I think it's more or less like, where are you at? All right. Um, you said you could walk there. All right. Hop in the car. We take you to your auntie house and drop him off and be like, look, he was wilding. He go his little disorderly ticket. Maybe you give him a ticket or something like that. But I think that. Um, but a lot of departments are going to do that because it's liability. Correct. They're correct. That's why it. I said it's it's. The problem is at the politician level, the people who write in the politics, mm -hmm. you know, because you run into all the liabilities and all these other different problems. Yeah. Right. As I said, I don't always bring it down to the cop level. I look at the the the, 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 the people level. who write in the, the, the policy. The, the, and, the, and I'll the say this, protocol. like the, the protocol, like the reason why I'm giving I'm saying, like, don't escalate the situation. Keep it calm. You know, if you got to record the situation, I'm not saying don't protect yourself. What I am saying is that. The rules are the rules, and the way police procedure is is the way it is. Yeah. You so, to protect yourself with the way it is, don't escalate, man. Don't fight with the cops. Don't start an argument. Don't cause a scene. Don't sit there and yell at them that they're racist or whatever. Because like, what you do is you forfeit leverage of the situation and leave it up to them to make a decision. And they're not always going to make the best decision that will, you know, that might it might hurt you. It, there's a higher. The more you escalate, the higher chances of you getting hurt. So, guys, don't. All I'm saying is don't fight, man. You got to adapt for survival. Adapt in that for case. survival, in guys. That case, you you guys can get mad at me and, and say, oh, Byron, you're cool. And blah, blah, blah. I'm just giving y'all advice so that you guys don't get in a situation where you can get hurt. What is is what it is. I'm telling you guys to, how to deal with the what is. Yep. Fuck your feelings. I'm telling you how to deal with the what is. They are going to escalate. They are going to fuck you up. They are going to. Don't give them an excuse to fuck you up. Boom. Mm -hmm. Like, damn. Like, you, you got, well, the cops are fucked up. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Hypergamy sucks. Girls, they up. How are you gonna change it? They want the they want the top twenty percent of men. They want guys that are taller to make more money than whatever. Yeah. Same fucking shit. Yeah. We don't make excuses on this podcast. We don't cry about the situation. Whatever. We fucking adapt, man. Yep. You got to. Period. That's what we talk about. We talk about adapting. Y'all niggas want to cry in the chat. Oh, no, this is fucked up. It is. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Yeah. Girls, they up. The police suck I mean, every now and then. There's bad cops. There's good cops. Life isn't fair. I mean, the thing is, they taking your comments as absolutes. And, and there's a lot of nuance to the conversation. And there's a lot of different takes and views. And 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 just because you have one view doesn't invalidate another view. Just because you may view this whole cop situation as something completely different doesn't invalidate what you're saying. Just because you're saying mm -hmm. something doesn't invalidate what somebody in the chat might be saying. Um, both both arguments can exist at the same time. Cops can be racist. Absolutely. And you can yeah. and you can um, 
I'm not saying they're not. Yeah, and you I should agree. and you should watch how you conduct yourselves in front of racist, potentially racist cops. Absolutely. So both can be true at the same time. I'm Absolutely. just saying pick your battles because a lot of these battles you guys are choosing, it's even worth the fight because you can't control anything. Yeah. So if you're going to pick a battle, at least have the, the control of that situation. Absolutely. But cops and like hypergamy and girls, bro. All you can do is adapt and survive. That's so. what we teach you guys on this podcast, man. How to how to deal with this with, with the reality of what's going on, man. Yeah. Life is not fair, guys. Not. Life is not fair with dating. It's not like it's not fair with dealing with law enforcement. It's not fair with the law. It's not fair. We talked with a, about a bunch of stuff here where there's situations, false, great accusations. You know, it is what it is, man. Mm. On this podcast, we're not here to have a victim mentality and cry about the situation. We're here to adapt to the situation, come up with practical solutions to it, and have the best outcome for yourself. Have the best outcome for itself. Like, like if I always say it. A lot of people want to live on possibilities. Mm -hmm. Fuck possibilities. We operate on probabilities. Mm -hmm. The probability mm -hmm. that you act like an idiot with a police officer and him being racist, racist or whatever, it might use your color against you or the way that you act against you. Mm. It might be high. Mm. Who high. knows? Mm -hmm. Why are you going to take the chance? But I know. The probability of you not getting fucked up and getting home safe without getting killed high. is high if you are respectful, courteous, and mindful of the officer's safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So there fuck you, you motherfuckers in the chat crying. Oh, you cool. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm giving you guys practical solutions so you don't get hurt, man. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I mean, one of the ten Hotep commandments is a master. I'm a master of law and finance. If you're a master of finance, obviously deal with less cop interactions. Um, you might get the old, uh, you know, Chris Rock getting pulled over, <laughs> driving while black situation. You know, you, you 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 might be subject to that. But also, when you're dealing with law, if you master the law and a cop pulls you over and you start citing like, yeah, bro. Article One, <laughs> Section Ten <laughs> of the state, <laughs> cops gonna be like, ah, right, you ain't the one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. So it's also you got to be a master of your. A lot of times you'll see, uh, you see black folks become masters of law. After they get incarcerated, yeah, they become experts in law in jail. We got to reverse that. That's good too. Yeah, absolutely. You know that's good too. But also, let's start being aware of the laws before we have a problem with the law, so that even when you got you know the stash in the in the car, you know the legal language to get the cop going on his way. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And that's a piece that's missing as well is. And that's another thing. Like they don't they're not going to teach that, that in critical yeah, race they theory. Right. They're not going to tell you, hey, yeah. you know, um, how are you diversifying your stock portfolio? Right. They're not going to tell you that. And they're going to say is capitalism is racist. So then you're not even wanting to go get a stock portfolio. <laughs> you're a victim now. Meanwhile, the person who's telling you capitalism is bad. Got half a million in a stock portfolio diversified oh. through cryptocurrency and security. Facts. It's a big distraction. Yo, look at this chick, bro. There was this female YouTuber, man. I forget her name, bro. Uh, but she was like a huge Bernie uh supporter saying, like, tax the rich. She buys like a multi-million AOC. dollar uh she buys a multi-million dollar um penthouse. Yeah. In a in a downtown city in Texas. I think it was in Austin. Okay. And everyone was flaming her. Because she was so, you know, left, but go Bernie, tax the rich. She wore, she was famous for wearing the shirt. Forget her name. Someone's going to put in the chat. I know they are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, it, it, it's hilarious. But yeah, that, that's a perfect example of what you're saying. Like Nico? they're telling you. Are you talking about Boomer Girl? Uh, Nicolo? Nicolo? I think that might be her. Nicolo. Yeah, that might oh, be her. Oh, she's the, the Twitch streamer. Yeah. She's a Twitch streamer? She, she I, I think so. She's we'll a Twitch streamer. She, she so. makes a big bag. And she, yeah, she's got a nice... She's probably in Texas. She's got a nice uh, apartment pad. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, what they were about. roasting her, bro, and it was hilarious because she literally was that like tax the wealthy. She was all about burning. Then she got this million dollar plus apartment, super lag <laughs> luxurious and lavish, and they're just like roasting her, which is pretty funny. All right, super limousine chapter. Marxist. Yeah, uh, oh. there we go, limousine. I like that. I like that term. <laughs> we got uh, okay. Let's hit these super D. chats. I know I triggered some people. It is what it is, man. Like I said, guys, I'm I'm not saying there aren't racist police. I'm just saying deal with the situation at hand. There are racist police, so protect yourself, man. The right. did we fall? 20 bucks? Um, okay, so oh, uh, let's see here. So uh, we're going to pull up some of these super chats. We uh, got a show, an another show. Yeah, we got another show here in a Wait. little bit, and I got to hit the gym. Uh, okay, so we got uh, Keem. Uh, well, how far down are we going to go? Shout out to Chris. Chris just got on the on the ones and twos, man. He's in the house now. Uh, yeah, okay, so we'll start here. Cold Steel. Okay. Mode one is the smartest way for guys to filter for high interest and protect themselves from false accusations. Inviting women over and making a move it gives woman plausible, women plausible deniability. Okay, don't waste that's time. back from the false grape accusations. Twenty dollars. 
Maury Spees the uh, the Beast. Y'all speaking, uh, y'all boys speaking straight facts. Keep up the good work. Let your nuts hang. Much love. <laughs> God bless. All right. Thank you, Kimo. African Americans can't do a systematic uh, racism because until we be quiet and fix our own in house issues, power is never surrendered, it's taken. Cut all that crying out, get some skills, and compete, man. There you go. Okay. Uh, Matasuki. Matasuki Meyer, but Myron, and sarcasm. I feel I should be able to act however around police because uh, biz reason, bizarre world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric Smith, Myron is correct to say that the odds are stacked against white men. Instead of putting up with this, we are ditching the Western world and moving to other places. There What's you go. Happening? A Columbia, lot of all over. Kim San, the cop was giving the drunk man a pass at first. You got to what that while watch. I think what he means is watch the the video. Yeah, okay. yeah. The, the, I, I'm uh, again, like I said before, and this is what I mean. Like sometimes when people hear you speak, they think you're like Absolute. refuting things, and it's just like, no, listen to what I said. I wasn't blaming the cops. What I said was the protocol was wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes, the cops were. I felt in the beginning were doing a pretty good job with the stop. The problem is the protocol didn't have the man sit on the ground. Therefore, he tried to escape. Had he sat, sat on the ground, maybe he doesn't try to escape. And everybody goes home safely. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Again, it's not on the cops. I'm talking about the protocol. protocol. Uh, freedom is gold. Marin was Black Wall Street 400 years ago. There are people are alive today that witnessed that free land labor. How was that corrected to even the sport? Okay. Okay. I don't know what Little you said there. Cause that's crew. Ten bucks. If everyone would listen to and respect the cops, ninety-five percent of these killings would stop. Don't have to like them, but you need to respect them. Facts. You do, yeah. man. You do. Uh, divided we, we fall. fall. Here's Here some... is some of my stripper money. So when you get booted for being book heroes, you can keep doing your thing. Thank you, man. <laughs> and right. then okay. uh, so I think we're caught up. Got a hotel. Where can they find you, bro? Uh, hotepjesus.com. Boom. Simple to the point. That's it, guys. The pay. Uh, the book is below. Dumbling. Get the link if you guys want to. Can get... you share that uh, link on the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris? Absolutely. Yeah. It's. Uh, I think it's right there. Um, uh, Nate Bob, but Moms, I... can you put it in chat? Yep. Boom. There you go. There it is. The page uh, report. Page report. Can page. you share? Can you share the actual sales page? The actual uh, website. Yeah, we on can, the screen. Right? Yeah, oh, you mean show oh, it? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah the actual. Up, yeah. The actual. Uh, yeah, site. yeah, yeah. We'll pull it up right now. We'll pull it up right now. No um. But yeah, guys, obviously, as you guys can see, obviously, this was a very base conversation, base conversation. You know, you guys can agree, disagree. But I think that's the most important thing is having forums like this where people can speak openly without having to worry about getting canceled or shut down or whatever it is. And I think these are important yeah. discussions to have. We bring a variety of guests from different walks of life and we listen to what they have to say. And this is why the platform is going so big, because we actually listen with an open mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it's very important, man. As soon as you start to suppress the truth, problems happen. Exactly. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, ahead, so real fast, I just want to say shout out to Rolo. Rolo on the check in. Cover art? He did the cover. I can tell. Classic work here by Rolo Tomasi. Shout, shout out to Rolo Tomasi. I've been getting a lot of people talking about the cover, and they're like, bro, the cover is elite. Elite. So I can't wait to get the physical out. Um, and, and me and Rolo are working on making that happen. Um, but go, go scroll to the top of that, Chris. Just want to read something real fast. This is a, a, a true fact. Um, at the very top of the page, it says, everything you need to know about United States history that your high school teacher never told you because Marxism equals censorship. All facts, no fluff. Um, all fact, yeah. So in the book, um, it's all facts and no fluff. Like I literally lay out every pe single piece of evidence that people need to know about our banking system, what the congressional record has in there, uh, some Supreme Court justices, what they've said, um, some of the Supreme Court cases. We had the unedited version of the book conversation. I remember <laughs> a few months ago, me and you talked about it. What's that? Oh, 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 yes, 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 yes. How everything started. Oh, you, yeah, you have the unedited version of my book in your head. <laughs> <laughs> Which you guys definitely need to, to check out. Yeah. You know um, right. But yeah, that's that's exactly what's happening there. Awesome. Okay, so real quick, uh, lastly, we can close this out. Uh, Cindy MGTOW, 10 bucks. Love your depth of perspective, Hotep. Bought the Patriot Report during the stream. There you go. Dope. Thanks, Myron, for bringing the heat and being unapologetic, unapologetically honest. I appreciate you, bro. You're too fresh. I don't take honest. I don't take sides, guys. Like, yeah. you know, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, Marcus B. Martin AA A. is vernacular lose as a race, not a nationality. Egyptians, though from Africa, aren't called AA. Neither are they are any of the other. Any groups. Uh, above the Saharan resident, uh, uh, desert, even though they're technically African, you're Arab. Mm. Whatever, Marcus. Like it, it, you can't <laughs> win. Like, like uh, it's like it's like. Oh, you're from North Sudan. You're an Arab because you guys speak Arabic. 
what? What does that have to do with that? You can't the, win, man. Does, does that mean that Nigerians are not African because they speak Nigerian? Like, what, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? <laughs> like, Africa is Africa. You know what I'm saying? And here's the other thing, too. Just because you're a part of a race, right, does not mean that you can't speak on other issues. That's just, that that's racism in itself. Oh, you're 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 a white man. You can't speak on black issues. <laughs> Fuck, that's stupid. That that's stupid. You can speak on any issue if you're educated to it to some degree. There's Caucasian people that are African American history majors that know more than a lot of you niggas in here that want to sit here and try to talk shit, man. Mm -hmm. So, are you are you a subject matter expert? The color of your skin doesn't matter. And as a matter of fact, you saying that perpetuates racism in itself because you're saying. Just because of his color of his skin, mm -hmm. he's not equipped to handle something. The oh. fuck? That's stupid. Like literally, y'all. Stupid. <laughs> what the hell? And then lastly, you can't our, fight racism or racism. Thank yeah, you. You can't. Like what the hell? Our sponsor, Identity IQ. Uh, Trick, uh, Tri, can you bring it up one more time? Uh, guys, real quick, click the link below. You can get your credit monitored and your score higher. For our website. So guys, get on there. 100%. That's what we used to get our credit scores so high. They're printing money, guys. Exactly. You need to be able to have something else um, outside of fiat currency to leverage to be able to get yourself assets. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, guys, you may not have the money right now, but with the credit scores, you can get what you want as well. So, very important, guys. And also, well, it's a $1 trial. You get it for a week. And from there, you guys can test it out as well. This is what we use to build our score and also monitor our, our and, credit. And Hotep mentioned that. it earlier. Oprah, Jay-Z, etc. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys, I hate to say it, but money creates freedom, man. Yeah. Like it creates freedom. So you don't have to sit here and be a fuck them fucking victim, man. Yeah. You yep. know what I'm saying? I don't see like the super rich sitting here like, oh my God, this is fucked up. It's like, nah, man, they might do that for the papers every now and then, like, you know, so that they can look good. But in know, reality. Yeah. But in reality, bro, they don't give a fuck down. Yachts hanging out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> with their investment bankers of all different colors. Bro. Laughing. You know what I'm saying? It, money is, is <laughs> money is what is green. It ain't black. It ain't white. It ain't nothing. It's and green. everyone sees green, bro. So, Money gives you freedom and power, guys. So people, get on that. People, leverage the credit. People respect money, man. Yeah, and it's and only a not... dollar to get in, guys. Yep. So, guys, we're going to catch you in a little bit. we got a show with some girls later on. Yep. And, yeah, this was a great show, man. This was a great show, man. It was a very base conversation. Like I said, you guys don't have to agree with everything, but just have an open thought, uh, you know, and be able to have this discussion. I'll give you the last word, Hotep. You want anything? Anything um, to people? Congratulations on the new plaque, man. Oh, Thanks, I appreciate brother. it, bro. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You've grown a lot. You've grown a lot, man, and thank you for having me. No, man, we're always happy to Your have brother, you, Your brother, man. Always, brother. Appreciate it, man. Cool. All right. Later, All right, guys. Up. We'll catch you guys uh, at about in about an hour with a late night show. Peace. Peace.